I want uh, also, Audran, uh, about how you are a recent graduate of Juilliard, so mm -hmm. you have had the, the, the training. The, yes. Uh, and, and how did you... Well, you know, get into it, Carousel. Did, did, were you involved with the London production? Oh, at all? no, not at all. Actually, I, I went to Juilliard on a fluke, actually. I, I was into musical theater um, from the time I was about nine. I was doing a little Mickey Mouse Club back in Fresno, California, where <laughs> Mickey's from as well. And um, I did a lot of shows at a musical theater there. And uh, I decided I wanted to be an actress and a musical theater actress. And my voice teacher at the time, I was kind of studying, and, and he would say, sing this aria. And I'd be like, no, I'm going to belt, you know, and I was always trying to belt everything yeah. out. And so, yeah. so he said, come on, just wanna, why don't you try an audition for Juilliard just to see what it's like, just to see what the operatic program would be like. And I said, okay, it'll be a nice trip to New York, and, and you know, my mom will pay for it. Cool, I'll do it. <laughs> so I, I went ahead, and I, I auditioned, and I sang... A, a soprano aria, and I told them I was a mezzo soprano, and I did some optional ending, just things you're not supposed to do at all in classical music. And they laughed at me at my audition. And then they asked me, they said, How old are you? And I said, Well, I'm 17. And they just laughed again. And I thought, Well, I blew this, you know. And then they called me and accepted me. I thought, Well, it's just, you know, to have some like comic relief at school. <laughs> I, swear, I swear that's what I thought it was. It was just, there's no reason. So I studied opera, but the whole time I was there, I kept missing. I kept missing musical theater a lot and, and fighting with my teachers the whole four years I was there. So every once in a while I'd sneak away and I did an industrial and then I snuck away and I left school for six months and I did the Secret Garden tour. And that's how I got my agent. And then um, after I graduated from school, I went out on the road again with Secret Garden uh, last May and uh, a year ago last May. And then uh, I got the call to come in and audition for Carousel and I auditioned six times after fainting at my final callback, which I also fainted when I auditioned for Showboat. <laughs> I'm really good at that. And I fainted. Oh, I fainted. I said, darling, Mr. Snow. Boom. And I fainted. I sang Bill for Showboat audition. And I said, he's just my bang. I fainted for that. And then my, my sophomore recital. I finished. I always finish my numbers. That's good. I finished the last, these two beautiful Margaret Bond songs. I, I remember thinking, oh, I got through these songs. I hate opera, but I got through these songs. And I finished the last note. And then I heard someone go, somebody catch her. And I thought, what's happening? And it was me. Oh, my goodness. That's amazing. And then they hired When you say you were fighting all those four years, what were you fighting? I was fighting the operatic sound. I was fighting really giving my voice over completely to opera. I had a, you know, my, all of my aunts sing, and my faux uncle Mickey over there was a singer who I grew up listening to. And so I, I uh, had this, you know, kind of... Yeah, uh, spiritual sound. I had a uh, had a musical theater sound going, and I opera was something that just seemed really foreign to me, and I just didn't want to give up the sound I was raised with. Mm -hmm. But I did end up compromising and, and ending up with a technique which helps you to survive. Well, exactly, and, and that's what I wanted to, to get at a little bit is 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 your uh, view of the of the difference uh, of, of of dealing with opera, not mm -hmm. only obviously vocally, which we know about, but acting. I mean, you're, acting. you're doing a whole different ball game there too. Well. Um, I think, for me anyway, and the thing that I got into trouble with a lot at Juilliard is when you're dealing with opera, your first concern is the voice, mm -hmm. and your first concern is the technique and the purity of the sound and the beauty of the notes and the, and the breathing and all that stuff. <coughs> Acting is secondary. You know, you're thinking, okay, I, I have to have the right kind of technique, and then I think, oh, and I'm sad. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. it's really, I think, very, uh, it's, it's not three-dimensional. I think at all as far as... And see, my training was the opposite. My teacher stressed <coughs> acting. He right. said, if you are a good actress when you sing, uh -huh. you'll be a great singer. Yeah, and I think that's the, that's, that there lies different. the difference right there. And I know exactly what you mean about the opera. Because I was a big Judy Garland, Barbara Streisand fan, and I remember studying voice, and I would never want that sound. And I would fight it and fight it. I swear, and only in the last year have I given in. <laughs> but it's something, it's something that, you know, you think that you have an image of what you want your voice to be, you know, which is, and it's totally wrong to train that way. You, opera is really the base, you know. Well, it's, a, it's like ballet is the technique, so you can exactly. dance, do whatever kind of dance you want. You need that firm technique. And I got, the, and the ballet, I started at eight years old. And um, I'm so glad that I did because it's the basic training. And, it, and I could probably dance till I'm, you know, 50 years old. God, no. <laughs> you know what? I take that back. <laughs>